Uh, good afternoon, everyone. We're group 20. Uh, my name is Jack, and in my group, I have Chankyo, Chen, Yue, and Ziyu, and our project was semantic bird's eye view mapping. So the problem statement in general is that uh, the motion net architecture um, came out a couple years ago, and it generates local egocentric uh, semantic maps with motion information as well. But no work has been done to extend this in generating a global map by incorporating pose estimation uh, of the robot. And that's precisely what our project does. So our project utilizes MotionNet um, to generate a global semantic bird's eye view map. Um, so involved in that, we trained MotionNet uh, on semantic kitty data set, and then we apply AIMU die dead reckoning uh, for state estimation. Um, and we also trained that on kitty. Uh, and then we use semantic mapping techniques uh, to integrate the state estimation with the local maps and generate a global map. So here's a diagram of the system architecture. So the only two sensors uh, necessary in order to implement our project were LIDAR and IMU. Uh, the LIDAR data goes straight to MotionNet, which generates the local maps. And then the IMU data goes straight into AIIMU, which generates a 3D pose. And then we just do uh, a bit of projection to get the bird's eye view pose. And then we combine these two using mapping techniques to generate the global map. So MotionNet is the deep learning uh network that used the, as the backbone processing for the uh, LiDAR point clouds. It first converts a sequence of point cloud into a bird's eye view maps, and then uh, it used a spatial temporal pyramid network to learn the feature. And then lastly, it outputs a uh, local, completely semantic bird's eye view map. So uh, we use semantic KD data set uh, for training and evaluation. We first uh, pre-process the uh, data set to generate the ground truth using 50 past and 50 future frames. Uh, for training, we converted seven frames of point clouds into the uh, local map with a range of 20 meters around the ergo vehicles and then uh, resulting in a resolution of 0 0.2 meters. Uh, we then train uh, motion net for AE parks. Yeah, so we use AIIMU as a state estimation part of our project. And AIIMU is the paper released at December of the 2020. And it's, uh, as you see the figure, it's, it proposed an AIIMU dead reckoning system of AI-based AI noise parameter adapter and invariant extended Kalman filter. So in AIIMU algorithm, deep neural networks are employed to adapt the noise parameters of common filters. So we basically use IMU and car variable data to train the, AI, train the with parameters and basically kinematic models are governed by like for each time steps, uh, rotation metrics and velocity and positions are updated with the using the given IMD data. So if you see the next slides, <clears throat> it's pretty simple that uh, we use um, uh, convolution neural networks for training the um, each time step of noise parameters. So and only the input is the the uh, the angle velocity and acceleration come, coming from IMD data. Yeah. And also we use IEK for the metric Legros. Uh, Using uh, for IEK, we use this, we use this as a common feature of uh, extracting the states. We train the neural network with learning rate of one e minus four for about forty epochs, which is similar to the training parameter proposed in the paper. Of what is possible on the fitting due to the lengthy training process, we deployed our training code on Amazon Web Service, which took two days to complete. The last function uses the relative increment translation error after trying 100 meters to 800 meters of each batch. Yeah, so the mapping part of the project uh, is basically what fuse the motion net output and the AIMU output. So the general uh, pipeline for this. Um, so for each frame of LiDAR and IMU data, we would compute the estimated 3D pose using AIIMU. And then we would perform the projection to obtain the bird's eye view pose. Uh, and then we would pass the LiDAR data into motion net and obtain a local map. And then we would perform a bit of transformation on the coordinates um, to obtain the uh, global map labels from the local map uh, using the bird's eye view pose. And then we would update the map parameters, kind of how we did in homework for, uh, for each grid cell on the global frame. To show the result, we compute the mean and variance as we did in homework four. We also generate a JAR app to incrementally make a global map, which shows the whole process intuitively.
And we use evaluation metrics, including ILU, precision, and record uh, to measure the performance of mapping. We found out that our method performs better in predicting roads and buildings, but for smaller objects like fences and cars, the performance is unsatisfying, which may be due to the error in trajectory estimation. So we compute the L2 norm error for trajectory and measure the performance using ground truth trajectory. Compared with the result in previous slide, we noticed that the error is significantly enough to severely impact the smaller classes like cars and sidewalks. So to discuss a bit about roadblocks and future work related to this project, uh, the main one is that we weren't able to quite utilize motion information from MotionNet. Uh, we think that this could be done uh, to incorporate dynamic object thresholding, which might be able to generate cleaner static maps. Um, and we weren't able to do this because we were limited uh, due to the project time when we were training. Uh, the next thing is to have the ground truth labels the same as the test labels. So I'm not sure if you noticed uh, in an earlier slide, but the ground truth map generated had a bunch of blank spots, whereas our test data filled it in. And that's because the ground truth data had an unlabeled label, label whereas our test output did not. Uh, and so um, fixing this would be able to have cleaner evaluation metrics and the map comparison would be a bit more accurate. And here are our references. Now we'll take any questions if you guys have them. Thank you.